Okay, so when, one of the ways that we can describe the VOR is in terms of its gain. So the VOR gain is the output over the input. And the output of the VOR is the eye movement, and the input is the head movement. So basically, this sh should equal negative 1. The eye movement should be exactly equal to, but in the opposite direction uh, from the he head movement. Now, it's not entirely true that the gain is always one under uh, perfect working conditions, or, or it should be, even that it should be one. So if you look at something very far away and you, and you, move, your eye, you move your head back and forth, the eye movement that you make is very small because you're looking at optical infinity. So you really don't have to move your eyes very much to continue to look at the mountain that's 100 miles away or 50 miles away. Um, in contrast, if you're looking at something very close by and, you, and your uh, head moves, then you have to move your eye a lot more to follow, to keep your eye fixated on that same near target. Okay, so the VOR gain is much greater for near targets than for far targets. Now, you are not aware of that until I told you that. I was not aware of that until I learned it. None of us know that stuff, but we do it. We do it without thinking about it. How do we do that? We use our cerebellum. So the cerebellum is going to, it's going to be a big, uh, the overlord of the vestibular nucleus synapse, vestibular, nu vestibular nucleus neuron synapse. And it's going to say, okay, right now I want you to pay attention to this synapse this much, and I'm going to wait this other synapse this much, and so on. So let's just see how that works in general. In general, what we, what we know is we have input coming in from the inner ear to the vestibular nuclear neuron. This is uh, in the hindbrain. This neuron is in the hindbrain. We also know that we have optic flow information coming down from the midbrain. We have neck proprioceptive information coming in from uh, somatosensory pathways. And we also have information from the other ear. There are commissural pathways that allow uh, the vestibular nucleus on both sides to hear from both ears. And we also have information coming down from motor uh, pathways. This cerebellar uh, synapse coming from the vestibular, uh, not the vestibular, the flocculus, the flocculonodular lobe, the vestibulocerebellum. So the flocculus is, is the major area. So the flocculus is, has Purkinje cells that, is, that are going to project into this vestibular nucleus and modify the weight of these various synapses. So under one circumstances, it may say weigh the vestibular inputs by one, and in, under different circumstances, circumstance weigh them by 1.5. So you can have a larger VOR when you're looking at a near target than when you're looking at a far target. And this, this same principle comes into play if you wear glasses and as you change glasses, um, if you put on funny glasses, prism glasses, all of this is, uh, you will eventually learn to recalibrate the inputs and and have a VOR that serves to keep uh, fixation steady. Okay, now, what happens if we lose one ear? So we already talked about having a nystagmus. Well, that nystagmus will actually go away after a while. Why? Because the cerebellum is going to is going to recognize that there's a there's an ongoing problem here. It's going to recognize the mismatch. How's it going to recognize the mismatch? Because every time you make a VOR, you're not actually ending up with the right visual image. Okay, so the cere cerebellum learns about the error and then goes about trying to correct that error. And the way it does it is it increases the weight. How much this cell is going to listen to other inputs. It recognizes that this is no longer a reliable source and now is going to up the gain on input from the contralateral vestibular nucleus, up the gain on proprioceptive and, and visual inputs. All right, and that's going to work pretty well. And in point of fact, the one that gets up the most is probably the visual inputs. So a person that, that uh, has lost uh, vestibular function, if they're in the dark, 
they're they're not going to it things are not going to work well things are not going to work well um in the dark and even in the light uh uh if they lose visual inputs and they only have neck proprioceptive inputs they can they can uh, accomplish something, but not not as much. So this is a much weaker uh, corrective measure. The vision is really how uh, the vestibular um, function gets corrected normally. Now, what what happens if the cerebellum goes uh, is is lesioned? So what happens if the cerebellum is lesioned is that you no longer can modify the VOR. The VOR is fixed in gain, and it stays fixed at gain in gain at 1.0. So it's going to stay fixed at gain at 1.0. So if you see an individual and, um, and you're wondering what's the health of their brain stem, let's consider the, uh, the testing, uh, the VOR. They're, they're not responsive. They're either in a coma in a so-called vegetative state, an unresponsive state, they may be minimally conscious, but not conscious at the moment that you're testing them. And so what you, they're lying down, and you turn their head, you rotate their head back and forth. And what do you see? Well, one possibility is that you see what's called doll's eyes. In other words, there is a VOR. Um, but there's always a VR. No matter what you do, the person is going to stay looking straight ahead, okay, as you move there. And that's how some of the old dolls, their, their eyes rotated in the, um, in the socket that way. So this is called doll's eyes, and it is a sign that there's cerebellar damage, okay? This is an unalterable VOR. Um, that's actually a good sign because the other possibility is that as you rotate the head, the gaze rotates. Gaze rotates with the head. And why is that a worse sign? Because that tells you that the VOR is no longer working. All right? So that is, uh, that, that can't be damage restricted to the cerebellum. That can, that's damage that is somewhere in the, in the guts of the brain stem. And so that's a, a much worse uh, sign than is doll's eyes.